you woo! You're woo! I don't know how the people at home are watching on TV, but you people here in the theater are woo! I love when people answer the question, how are you like that? How are you? Woo! I'm woo! It's weird. You can't help that. That's our last primal instinct, that thing. Everybody does that, right? I don't care how laid back you are. At some point in your life, you've gone, woo! You can't help it. It's that last little bit of monkey left in us, right? Remember when we used to be monkeys? We used to be monkeys. Everybody does that. Of course, you don't even answer the question, how are you like that in a large group of people like this, though. You wouldn't answer that way like one-on-one. -on -one. That would be weird, right? You're driving home at night and a cop pulls you over or something, you know? How are you this evening? Woo! Woo, baby, how are you? Woo! Woo! Well, I just blow in here? Let's see how that works. Even though it's just a generic animal noise, we all go with the same noise, right? Everybody goes, woo, W-O-O-O-H, right? <laughs> Except in Calgary for some reason, I don't know why, they go, ow! <laughs> they put the W on the end, the freaks. What's that about? What do they get? Where do they get their own special little thing? That's not fair. I tried to get one of my own little generic noises started for excitement. Mine didn't catch on though. Whenever I get excited, I go, pit meh. <laughs> but it didn't catch on, you know? It's hard to pronounce, I'll give you that, but come on. You know what's getting out of hand nowadays with these frequent customer incentive cards that every business on the planet has now, every store you go into. Have you got one of our cards? Have one of our cards. Keep it in your wallet and then you come back and we stamp it and keep it in your wallet with the 50 other ones I got from every store on the planet. Every... I bought a car like two months ago. I went into the Honda dealership. I buy the car. The guy gives me one of these cards with six little pictures of Hondas on it. Right? He punches the first one out. Every time I go back and buy a new car, he's going to punch another one out. After I bought six cars, I get a free Subway sub. What the hell is that? It's, it's a horrible deal, man. I gotta I carry this card around for 70 years to get a goddamn sub. What the hell? That was a good joke, eh? That was a good joke. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't see sub coming. Sub just clipped you right in the back of the head, right? You're listening away. Sub, what? Oh my God. Like, here's a shitty joke, just to show you the difference. Watch, this joke sucks. Did you hear they, they still haven't caught the guy that shot Tupac Shakur? Have you heard that? You know who I'm talking about? Tupac Shakur, the big American rap star. As well as that big Canadian rap star, Six Pack for sure. <laughs> See, that's a shit joke, right? That was horrible. You still laugh a little bit, but then you go, oh, that's stupid. What the hell did I, how did I laugh at that? Uh, well, I've been having some fun recently. been doing some uh, traveling, vacation traveling. And I'm always freaked out whenever I'm traveling somewhere and I find out before you go, you gotta get a shot before you go. You gotta get like a needle, you know, like Red Deer. No, I'm kidding, not Red Deer. I was going to, my, uh, my wife and I went to Chile, which I now pronounce Chile. So that's how they say it. But I was telling a friend of mine, we're going to Chile, and he goes, oh yeah, you gotta get a needle for that. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, go see your doctor. So I go to my doctor and I said, I'm going to Chile. He goes, yeah, I gotta give you a shot for that. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even know, you know? And then he goes, uh, he goes when are you leaving? And I said, well, we're leaving in uh, four days. And he goes, oh, oh, too late. I'm like, well, what? He goes, yeah, you're supposed to get the shot like two weeks before you go. And I go, oh, well, I'm going. Am I going to be all right? You know, and I swear to God, my doctor looks at me. He goes, like, he goes yeah, you should be all right. <laughs> like, what the hell is that? Aren't you a man of science? What the? I don't need my doctor going, yeah, you know what? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get back to me, though. Let me know how it went, eh? I could use that information in my future doctoring. What the hell? We didn't have any trouble with that. We went to uh, this very small town in Chile where they didn't speak any English at all. And we don't speak any Spanish, but we, you know, we were stupid. We thought, oh, we'll get by, you know, we'll take a Spanish phrase book with us. And you can do a lot of mime when you're ordering stuff. And it's a Latin-based language. A lot of the words sound similar to English, right? But, oh, man, we had trouble, you know? Like, we got by. I didn't know what getting by means. Uh, we didn't die from not knowing the language. <laughs> Other than that, we had lots of trouble, you know? We're in this place for like crepes and, uh, or for, you know, breakfast and all these, you know, and I wanted to order uh, eggs. So I pull up the Spanish phrase book and I get the phrase and I order the eggs in Spanish. And then the waitress comes back at me with some question in Spanish. And I'm like, oh, she wants to know how I want my eggs done, right? Because she went to, you know, ¿Cuántos y You know? <laughs> how do you want your eggs done? It sounded like that, right? That's what you got to do. You got to try. You got you to work it. You got to, you know. And I was right. That's what she wanted to know. And I, there wasn't a word for it in the book. So I go, oh, uh, uh, poached? You know, poached? <laughs> Which she should have got, because I'm doing that, right? Poached? <laughs> what are you, stupid? Poached! Look, I can't, I can't help you more than poached. You know, 
she hears blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Of course she can't get it, right? But she finally, she goes and gets the manager who speaks a bit, a bit of English and the manager comes out. She goes, oh, she wants to know how you want your eggs done. I said, yeah, I want them poached. And the manager turns to the waitress. She goes, oh, pocha. And the girl goes, poached. I'm like, isn't that close? To poached, oh my God. That's exactly like poached. We don't need the English person for that one, you know? That's a wasted use of an English translator. I go, poached? You go, poached? I go, yeah, poached. And if not, I'll have poached eggs, whatever the hell they are, okay? I'll take my chances. <laughs> Whenever you travel anywhere internationally, they try to help you out. They tell you everything in picture language, right? Because they know not everybody speaks the same language. So they, like if you're going to the airport, right, and you want to go to departures, it doesn't say departures, right? The sign, it's a picture of a plane taken off. Oh yeah, see that? That's what we want to do. Or if you're going to pick up your loved ones, they're coming in from somewhere, you want to go to arrivals, right? But it doesn't say arrivals, it's a picture of a plane crashing! <laughs> oh my God, have you ever seen the plane in that picture? It's coming down. Here's the wheels back here. There's the ground. Oh no! Your loved ones didn't make it. It was horrible for them. Oh man. Some of those pictures are confusing, you know, like the safety card on the plane, same thing, there's not a word on it. It's all picture language, and uh, most of them I can get, most of them make sense, but some of them I can't get, and you feel stupid asking, you know, well, what did the picture mean? <laughs> you know, that's why it's in picture language, idiot. <laughs> but tell me if you can get this one, I can describe this to you perfectly, right? In the first frame, it was a little three-frame cartoon, right? In the first frame, there's a picture of a guy sitting in the window seat of the plane, and he's looking out the window, and there's a little dotted line going from his eye through the window of the plane to what looks like a cloud outside the airplane, right? Second frame. Same guy sitting there looking out the window. Dotted line goes from his eye through the window. Now where the cloud was, though, big ball of flames. Okay. Third frame. Same guy sitting there looking out the window. Dotted line goes from his eye through the window. Now the cloud and the flames are gone. Nothing at the end of the dotted line, but the window of the plane is now shattered. It's all broken and stuff. So, don't I look like a fool being the only one here that doesn't know what that means, huh? Because it's obvious. Does anyone know what that means? The nearest I could figure is they're saying, look. We all like to light the clouds on fire with our laser vision. <laughs> but doing so may cause the window of the plane to shatter. So please don't use your laser vision while on board the aircraft, you know? So I didn't, but it's very tempting. I know why they have that now, because oh man. You look out the window, you see the big white puffy clouds, and you know you could just <laughs> That's not fair to the others, you could endanger their lives. I'm not afraid of flying at all, but I am deathly afraid of plain toilets. Anyone else? Do they scare the hell? The hell is that? Did I just open a gate to another world? What the? That's a door to the outside of the plane. That's what that is. It was right outside. And I'm afraid. What if I accidentally hit the flush button while I'm still sitting down, forming a seal? Get out of the back of an airplane. Nice way to go, you know? There goes your frozen ass. You'd freeze like that. Not as bad as the, uh, the toilets on the trains in Europe, though. We went to Europe last year. You ever seen a toilet on a train in Europe? For those who haven't, I'll describe it. There's a toilet bowl, and then this tube goes down from the toilet bowl, and then daylight and train tracks. There's like no filtration system of any kind. Every bit of business you do, bam, right onto the tracks. I don't think BAM's the right sound effect, but something, you know. I didn't know that, you know. Now I know not to, you know, lick the rocks on the railway tracks. I didn't know that before, though. Oh, man. I used to love doing that. Oh, man. Well, we had a fun trip. We went into the Vatican, of course, which they wouldn't let me into the Vatican at first because I was wearing shorts. It was like a dress code. You can't go into the Vatican with shorts on. So I took my shorts off, and they were still like, no. It wasn't the shorts we had a problem with, pal. It was, it was my legs, you know. But that rule's not fair for the women. There was a lot of women showing up. They had like a nice blouse and a nice skirt. They look great, but the skirt only comes down to there. No good. You have to have your entire legs covered if you're going inside. And they're very adamant. They won't let you in. And it's funny because the guards only speak Italian and a lot of the tourists only speak English. So it was funny to watch the guards with their broken English trying to explain to these women why they couldn't come in with their skirts on, you know? They're like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't, um, uh, no, um, uh, you, uh, slut. <laughs> see, see, slut, see. Uh, the Pope in there. Uh, you slut, no go in. It's no good. It's not possible. You, no. 
So that's fun to watch while you can't get in with your shorts on, you know? <laughs> big double standard, though. Just down the road from the Vatican, they got a big statue of Medusa out in the middle of one of the big squares. And you know Medusa, right? She's got the skimpy little bikini on and the snakes and the hair slutty, huh? <laughs> Come on, bikini and the snakes? That's trash, right? <laughs> I think we agree. But the big myth about Medusa, any man that looks directly into her eyes, remember this, turns to stone. Which is a horrible thing to happen to anyone. Nobody wants to get turned to stone. So all the nice guys are getting turned to stone. All the assholes are looking at her tits. They walk away scot-free. That's not fair. I was raised to look into the eyes. Women wonder where all the nice guys are. They're all statues, ladies. That's where they are. They're all... You see them around town, all these nice old guys, always frozen in that pose of, you know, you can tell they were looking right into the eyes, you know. You never see statues like this. Those guys got away. I was just in Winnipeg, and uh, there's a convention by the airport there, and they had two conventions going on at once. They had a, a wrestling convention in one big hall, and a Star Trek convention in the other. Oh, yeah, imagine those two groups of people all in one building at the same time. Do you think there's any crossover there? You think there's some people going, oh man, we could go to both? <laughs> I don't think so. I think those are two very different groups of people, you know. Wrestling fans know that wrestling is fake. <laughs> the other day I taped, uh, I, I screwed up my taping and I got the Life Network by accident. And I got an operation on tape. Have you ever seen that? Like the, you're flipping around the stations, all of a sudden they're digging in somebody's guts and they're doing the operation. I got one of those on tape and I watched it. It was quite interesting. It was kind of gross, but interesting. But I watched it, you know, and then I've watched it again because I have it on tape and I still have it. And I've watched it like 10 times now. I know I could do it. I know I could do that one operation, man. I just, I got to get those tools. I don't know where to get those tools from. They had some really fancy ass tools. I'm going to go to Canadian Tire tomorrow though. I'm going to check it out. I got my driver's license renewed the other day. Do you, do, do you fill out your donor card when you renew your driver's license? Do you do that? That's a good thing, eh? You don't need your dead body when you're done with it, right? <laughs> fill out your donor card. Well, this is what I did. My problem is there's not enough options, right? There's only two options on your card. You can donate your entire body to a school of anatomy for research, right? Or you can donate organs of your body for transplants. That's it. Those are your only two choices. And I think they should have a third category at least, one other category of just other, and then you <laughs> fill in, whatever, right? <laughs> For example, I would like to donate my dead body for the purposes of uh, practical jokes, right? <laughs> if someone's got like a really good gag, they're like, oh my God, we could get a huge laugh here, but damn, we need a dead body. <laughs> I'm in, you know, sign me out or whatever the hell, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it'd, it'd keep my body someplace and then there'd be like an application process. You'd have to, you know, make sure that the gag you have in mind is dead body worthy. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny if you want the dead body, pal. But then, you know, how tough would the criteria be, you know? Just be like, what are you gonna do with the dead body? Or you're just going to throw it at your sister? <laughs> All right, that's hilarious. There you go. All right. She'll scream. That'll be great. Oh, man. I wish I could be there for that. Having a bit of water tonight. I'm trying to wean myself off alcohol. I was drinking really heavily. I was drinking a lot of hard liquor. And I cut that out. I went to just like beer for a while, you know. And now I'm just drinking water. And then after this, I'm going to go to American beer. <laughs> One step from home, baby. It's done. I got bitten by a duck once. How smooth was that segue, huh? I hate ducks now. Do you like ducks? You like them in general? Yeah? Fools. <laughs> Fools. You're a fool. I can understand why. They're all cute and feathery. They look all cute. But inside, cooked evil. They just hate you. Go near a duck. Go up to a duck. Has anyone else here been bitten by a duck? I'll bet. Anyone? Yeah, did you? Did you provoke the duck in any way? No? See? Evil. I was at a petting zoo. I was petting the duck. And he bites me. And how pissed off am I? I'm like, hello, excuse me, petting zoo. Hello. <laughs> yeah, do you know where you work? <laughs> yeah, check your job description, asshole. Here's my ticket, all right? You take a pet and then shut up about it. That's what you do. That's your gig. If you don't like it, get a new one, all right? I came here to pet some animals. <laughs> Stupid duck. I was, it didn't hurt, you know, it's a duck. But... <laughs> I'm more shocked than anything. What's he thinking? What's going through the duck's mind? Oh, that big guy's petting me. Oh, I'm going to bite him. You know, is he picking a fight with me? What are you doing? You know, like he's dissing me, right? I mean, admittedly, I'm not a tough guy, but I could take any duck. I don't care. You see me squaring off with a duck, you better put your money on me, man. If you... Daffy's going down, you know. What are you... 
What's he, why don't you go get five of your duck friends and come on back, asshole? I'll be right here. Make a pillow out of you, that's what I'll do. Get a good night's rest tonight with my head on your cushy ass! You know, like, I wouldn't bite a bear, right? Stupid. I'd get my ass kicked, you know? Maybe if it was already mauling me to death or something, but not if you just come up and started petting me. Hello. Hi there. You know, I'm not gonna go, ah! He'll kick my ass, that's why, you know? I know a bear could kick my ass. Pretty much anything but a duck could kick my ass. I'm not a tough guy. Any tough guys here? Tough guys? There might be, there might be, but they would just answer that question like this. You have to be really quick and looking in the right direction, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean by tough guys, though? Guys who are like always, always scrapping, always thinking about scrapping, they're always looking for a... Look at these buddies of mine, they're just like, every decision in life, they have to factor in scrapping how, you know, like, the guy's buying a pair of pants in a store or something, and he's like, oh, these fit nice, I like the color there. But could I kick a guy in the head wearing these? What if I, hit the... what if I had to boot a guy in the skull? I better make sure I could... Now you know how tough I am from how I kick right there. I just, oh I just gave myself away. I'm, that's what you got coming at you if you piss me off. You know, yeah, yeah. Want some of that, huh? Get lost. I got that move down, don't I? Oh, man. I know that move. Huh? Fuck off. I'll tell. I'm not afraid to tell. I could never be a tough guy, though. I accepted that my whole life, because I'm skinny, right? And you can't be tough if you're this build. And it was even worse back in high school. Back then, I was scrawny. It's different. Skinny's when you're a very thin person. Scrawny's when you're a very thin person, and people beat you up a lot. And I was a rocker dude, too, so I had, like, really long hair all the way down to my ass. And, oh, my God, if you're a skinny guy, and you want to make yourself look even better. Throw the hair down to your ass. What are you talking about? Yes. And put on a pair of skin-tight blue jeans. Yes. That's the look for you, skinny man. Yes, vertical stripes on the shirt. Yes. Now you're catching on. Yes. It was a horrible look. You know? And I thought I looked great, too. You know, I'm like 17 years old, standing in front of a mirror going, oh, man, I look good. Why don't I get laid? What gives? I just I like a sitting duck for the bullies, too. You can't, you couldn't fake it when you look like that, you know. You can't, you know, if a be guy was going to beat me up or something, I couldn't go, yeah, well, I'm tough. <laughs> just laugh at me. I envy the blowfish. <laughs> Maybe I should explain that a bit more. The blowfish, it's like this wimpy little fish, right? But when it's threatened, it can blow itself up and look really huge suddenly and scare away its intruder with its massive size, you know. I have no such mechanism. The best thing I could do if some guy were to threaten me is try and accentuate my tallness as much as possible. You know, like... Back off, pal. Yeah, I'm seven foot five. Didn't know that a second ago, did you? Surprise. Do you think that would work? I don't think so. I think that would just be farther for me to fall to the ground. You know what does work, though? I can't believe this. I totally fluked this one night. I was in a bar, and I bumped into this great big guy by accident, and he's all pissed. He spilled a bit of his beer on himself, right? He's all pissed off. And he's like, I'm going to kick your ass, you know? And I just instinctively, I just hissed at him. I don't know why. I just went... <laughs> he took off. He skedaddled, man. Because he did not want to mess with the Cobra Man, right? He does not understand the Cobra Man. Therefore, he fears the Cobra Man. So that works, baby. And you can do that too. Anyone can make that noise. It doesn't have to be like a fight. You could just be like in a restaurant. You got some snooty ass waiter. You know, you're like, "Excuse me, is my food ready yet? I ordered quite a while ago." You know, sir, I have eleven tables. <laughs> Your food's on its way, baby, right now. That waiter's in the back kitchen recruiting help from the other staff right about now. You, know? you can leave your section for a minute, okay? I have a Cobra man at one of my tables. Yes, he's angry. He hissed at me. But if you're gonna make that noise, here's a tip. Do it quietly. Scarier. It is, trust, trust me, this is very scary. But this is way scarier.
right? Some of you were scared right there. I know you were. I think we lost about 10 people out the back door. Woo! You had to be one of three things when I went to high school. If you wanted to fit in with one of the groups, you know, you had to be either a rocker or a preppy or a jock. Those were my choices if I wanted to fit in. And I chose the rocker gang, you know. Actually, when I started high school, I was, a, I was a jock. I had the short hair. I worked out all the time. I was even on the wrestling team. And then one day I was at a wrestling tournament, and my best friend on the wrestling team got his elbow turned inside out during a wrestling match. Oh, man, that was it for me. The next day I went out and bought a bag of dope and an electric guitar. That was it. My hair could not grow fast enough. <laughs> It was a horrible thing to see your best friend's elbow just, you know. Only it doesn't make a farting sound. You know? That'd be horrible if it did, though. Oh, man. Embarrassment and pain. Wouldn't that be awful? <laughs> Bill. No, it's my elbow. Ow. Stop laughing. It hurts. Oh, man. Oh, well, there it goes again. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be awful? I did mention drugs there, and I don't want to advocate the doing of drugs. I will admit I have done drugs in the past, but I didn't exhale, so. <laughs> all my friends smoke pot, and they put Visine in their eyes afterwards, because when you smoke pot, your eyes get all red, and then everybody knows you're stoned, right? So they put Visine in their eyes, because it gets the red out, and then nobody knows that they're stoned, and then they tell me, oh, Tim, you should put some Visine in your eyes. Your eyes are really red there, too, and I'm like, well, uh, no, I actually want everybody to know that I'm stoned. <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm a babbling idiot for no reason at all, right? You, they just think you're a knob, you know? His eyes are clear, he's just an idiot. I talked about his carburetor for half an hour, what the hell? Me, they cut some slack in those situations, and that's how I like it. Have you ever, have you ever tried to suck your friend into something to see how gullible they are? Just as a joke, just some crap you're gonna pull on them. You don't think in a million years they're actually gonna buy this load of crap coming out of your mouth. But then they do, they buy it. And you're about to laugh at them, and then you realize, realize you're not exactly pleased about this. You just found out your friend is way stupider than you thought. It's like a horrible realization. I was with this buddy of mine. We were down by the lake one time, and it was uh, wintertime, so it was all frozen over. And normally in the summertime, when we walk by this particular part of the lake, there's a lot of ducks hanging around there, right? Little pricks, you know, just like, bite someone's ass, you know? But it's wintertime now. There's no ducks. As we're walking by, he says to me, he goes, hey, man, where are the ducks? Like, where do they go in the wintertime? And I said, oh, they're under the ice. And he buys that, right? He goes, really? Just like hibernating and stuff? And I go, yeah. Yeah, hibernating and stuff. And he goes, that's wild. I never knew that. And I'm like, oh, man. This is like my best friend, you know? I've made serious life decisions based on advice from this guy. He thinks the ducks are under the ice. Hibernating and stuff. As I told him. So I pull out my little notebook and I write that down. That's how easy a joke is born, you know, and I'm writing that down. And he's a comic too, Tim Steves. And he asked me, he asked me, he goes, hey, what are you writing down in your little book there? And I said, oh, I'm writing down that ducks under the icing. And he goes, what? How's that a joke? And I said, oh, I'll work it into a bit somehow. He goes, well, it's not funny. And I go, well, no, not to you. It's not supposed to be funny to you. Have you ever met somebody at a party and you're talking away and they seem like a nice, normal, interesting person and they're like intelligent and you're like, wow, I've met a really cool person here. And then they just say like one thing, just one thing in the middle of the conversation that just makes you go, oh, you're fucked. Oh, man. You are totally messed up in the head. What? I met this guy at a party and we're talking away and, and the subject comes up that he lives across the street from a high school, you know. And he said he likes to go out at 3.30 and walk by the high school because he likes to watch the high school girls. An idiot, you know? You go by at four, that's when the detention girls are getting out. What's he talking about, this guy? What's up with that guy? What's he, oh man. You think someone's got their head on straight. You guys are an excellent crowd, by the way. It's good. A lot of times people come out to the club, and I don't know why they do this. They just, they're, and they're loving the show. They have a, they'll tell you afterwards, oh, I had such a good time. But they sit through the whole, through the whole show. They just sit there like this. And nobody's got a weird laugh, that's good. Oh my, that would just be horrible, you know? Big TV taping and someone's got a really strange... Because that throws you off worse than a heckler and there's nothing you can do. You can't tell them, shut up! Because they're laughing, right? They're having a good time, but it throws you off nonetheless. I was doing a show one night and this woman sat right in the front row of the club and she knew, right? Like her whole life people had to tell her, oh, you got a weird laugh, Missy, that is, whoa! 
And then all night long, she sits in the front row, all night long I gotta put up with this laugh. I swear to you, I knew this exactly, it was like this. Ah! 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 Like, what are you, leaking air? What is that? Are you pressurized and you're releasing that with a valve or something? What the? That's your laugh? Get out. You know. It happened to me like a couple weeks ago up in uh, Sudbury. I was doing this, bar, this little bar gig in Sudbury. And this guy way at the back of the room had the weirdest laugh I've ever heard in my life. It was totally throwing me off. It was throwing the audience off. Every time he laughed, everyone in the audience was like, what the hell is that? You know? I'll try and do this guy's laugh. I don't know if I can do it exactly. It was really strange, but it kind of went like this. Get off the stage, you suck! <laughs> yeah! Send out the weirdest laugh you've ever heard. Oh, my God. And he's loving the show, so all night. Thank you. My luck, the guy with the laugh like that is digging me the most. What can I do? Oh, awful situation for me. Uh, so I'm buying, I just started taking multivitamins. I go out and I buy a jar of multivitamins, right? And there's a warning on the label. You buy multivitamins. It says, this product contains enough iron to seriously harm small children. Well, that's quite the warning. But then the other day I was at the hardware store and I was buying a sledgehammer, right? No warning on that. And I know there's enough iron in that. So if I was a parent, I would know not to give my child too many of these pills. How would I not know to take a swing in his head with a sledgehammer? You don't know. You just... <laughs> Billy? There's nothing on here that says you should be suffering these side effects. But... No, you cannot have a multivitamin. Those things are dangerous. Clean up and go to your room. I don't have any kids of my own, but uh, I have a nephew. I got this little nephew, and he's just—he's about five years old, and he's—you know—he's really cute, and he's—he's he's just like a, a asshole. He's... He is, he's... and you wouldn't normally refer to a five-year-old child as an asshole. If you met my nephew, you'd go, oh, man, that kid is He's nuts. He likes to shoot elastic bands at my head, which I wouldn't mind so much if he just come up and shot an elastic at my head. But he always comes up, he just holds it first for a couple of minutes, just... <laughs> then I gotta make that I'm about to get hit in the head with an elastic face for five minutes, you know? <laughs> just fire the thing, you little... Trying to time my blink, you can't do that, you know? <laughs> Asshole. I'll be playing with this kid on the couch, right? I'm being a good uncle, I'm tickling him and stuff. Ha ha, we're having a good time. And he'll just like haul off and boom! He just <laughs> slams me in the side of the head, you know? And I'm like, all right, he wants to roughhouse it, so I'm wrestling with him now. And, you know, and then I just give him just a little ding, just like, a, you know, one one hundredth of the pressure that he just smacked me in the head with. And boop, you know, and then he's like, <laughs> Suck, you know. He started it, you were there. You gotta know this kid, I'd be playing with like a Hot Wheels car he got for Christmas on the carpet or something, and I go, hey Paul, what do you got there? He goes, because <laughs> apparently what do you got there in kid language means throw that chunk of metal at my head. It's a Hot Wheels car, you knob. So I pull out a gun, I shoot him in the abdomen. And then of course he's like, <laughs> I'm telling my mom. Yeah, well, you go tell your mom, you little suck. <laughs> tell her how you threw the car in my head. Tell her that. <laughs> All right, you'll omit that. Just jump right to the Uncle Timmy shop me. Make it sound like I overreacted. I didn't shoot him. I, I did get him back, though, for throwing the car at my head. He was going through this period of wetting his bed at night, and his parents were trying to bribe him out of that. They said, if you don't wet your bed five nights in a row, we'll take you on a trip to Disneyland which was like a huge deal for the kid. He had never been, and he was all excited. He had the ears, and I'm going to Disneyland, you know? And then it was, uh, he was, so three nights in a row, he hadn't wet his bed, and then the fourth night was Christmas Eve, and the whole family was staying over at my place that night, so I snuck into his room in the middle of the night and peed in his bed. <laughs> Shut up, revenge! It was glorious. You should have seen him the next day, but I didn't, I swear! <laughs> Apparently you did, I don't know. They're all saying that you did. <laughs> oh, I don't think there'll be a DNA test, no. I consider this crime solved. 
You ever go to shopping malls? Little kids, like three, four, five years old, they never watch where the hell they're walking, they'll just slam right into you. Just run along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking that way, running that way. And what do we do? We dodge them. We're like, whoa, hey, watch yourself. There. Whoa, hey. Just keep on doing what you're doing there, little kid. That's fine. It'll be all right. We shouldn't do that. You should learn at an early age. Watch where you're walking, you know? See, you see a kid coming five feet away, you know he's gonna slam right into you. Just line him up, just <laughs> Eyes forward, right? Yeah, you gotta look, okay. There you go. I get no personal pleasure out of that. But if it's gonna save that child from getting hit by a car one day. Like I said, I have no kids. <laughs> Shut up. I want to have kids. I do. I want to have kids someday. I'm tired of doing my own dishes, you know. I'm going to get me some of them kids. I think I might adopt when I have kids. I might adopt. That's a noble thing, I think, you know. If you, why, why bring a new birth into this world when you could take one that somebody else doesn't want kind of thing, you know. You adopt. And plus, I wouldn't mind getting, you know, skipping that whole having to hold their floppy neck up stage. You know how they just... <laughs> kind of flops around and you're responsible for that? I couldn't take it. I'm too klutzy. I'm afraid, I'm afraid though, no, I, you know, I can't even take care of myself. Never mind kids, oh my God. I have no discipline for like grocery shopping. I just buy crap. I still haven't gotten over the fact I can have whatever I want. So like 10 bags of cookies, who's gonna say no? You know, the cashier gets fired if she tries to stop me from buying these. But a friend of mine gave, some, gave me some very good advice. He said, next time you go grocery shopping, stuff yourself silly first, have a huge meal, that way you'll feel full when you're shopping and you won't buy all that extra crap that you don't need. Have you heard that advice before? It totally works, it totally works. Don't do what I did though, don't try and translate that same advice then to your liquor shopping. It's, whoa. <laughs> Holy, what a different effect. Oh my God. It's like, totally... That same friend of mine just called me up bragging about the fact that he got a brand new car. We've had this thing going since we were in high school together. Who's got the better car? And he's got me beat by a mile now. He got an Audi. And I just have an innie. <laughs> it's a stupid joke. <laughs> it was stupid. It was dumb, that joke. I do have a bad car, though. I got a Ford Tempo. Anyone got one of those? No, why would you? I can't. This is the most gutless car in the world. I can't believe they call it the Tempo. No. Wrong name. There's no Tempo to this car. Tempo. My, my car's tempo is soft jazz. This is my car's tempo. Go! Come on! It's so annoying, you know? Here's how the gas pedal works in most cars. You push the gas pedal, that sends more gas into the engine, and the car goes faster, right? My car, you push the gas pedal, that sends a request to the engine. Letting the engine know, I'd like to go faster now. The engine mulls that over for a while, and then it gets back to me with its answer, and the answer is usually, oh man, I'm bagged. Try me another day. Didn't we go fast yesterday? I think we did. So I'm going to Montreal next week. Anyone from Montreal here? Montrealers, right on. I love Mon Montreal's great. I love Montrealers. They're like the hardiest people on the planet there. You know, they put up with so much crap. You know, they got the horrible weather and the ice storms and the French people. It's like crazy. For them. It's just, it's, I'm kidding. I kid because I love. I love the French. I love the French. I got a bunch of French Canadian buddies of mine. They can't. They can't swear in English. That always cracks me up. They can't. In all fairness, though, we have no idea how to swear in French either. You know, we're like tabernacle. <laughs> That I swore in your language, I did so. But they don't know how to use the word fuck properly, you know, and they screw, I don't know how they screw that up. How do you screw that? It's such a easy word to use. You can use it as a verb, as a noun, as an adjective, you know? The one they screw up is when you put it into a sentence right next to a word that you want to emphasize, right? Like we'll say something like, get the fuck out of here. That's the one they screw up. They go, get out of here, fuck. What are you, what are you doing? You can't just tack it on the end like that. That's lazy. You got to work it into the sentence. What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing, fuck? No! You are such a tabernacle, I can't believe you. Why did you... Look at you. 
Do you hope you stay together, though? Do you hope Quebec stays and we can solve all these problems? And, yeah. yeah? Yes, thank you. Thank you for saying yes, please. I get so tired of hearing people go, no. Of course we want them to stay, you know. Shut up a bit, but stay. That's, <laughs> No, I, I'm on the French side. I'm all about, let's, let's learn. My, my, my big thing is, let's all learn French. Right? Are you with me? Where'd that enthusiasm go a minute ago? Let's all learn French. Come on, suck it up. Let's, we could all stand to have a second language, right? French is a beautiful language. You can use it all over the world. It's, uh, it's easy to learn. Shut up. It is. I took French in high school. There's rules to French. If you follow the rules and apply them to the grammar, then you can speak the language. It's not like English, we should talk. Our language is the hardest language in the world to learn because there's no rhyme or reason. There's no rule system. There's, you know, if you're trying to explain to someone how to speak English, you'd be like, okay, mouse, mice. Right? House, houses. Right? Watch, goose, geese. Right? Moose. Moose. <laughs> See how that works? You just apply the rule. It's very simple. It's, uh... That's why people can't get our language down. When people come from other countries and they can't, computers can't even learn English. They can't even teach. There's a computer at the Science Center in Toronto that they, it's just, uh, it'll answer any question. It's a talking computer, and the science says it will answer any question you type in. And uh, I also found out that it was programmed to have snappy little comebacks should you decide to insult the computer, right? Which is what I did. I said it would answer any question, so I typed in, why don't you go pound sand up your ass? That's a question, right? Why would you not do that, computer? I'm just a goof, you know, and I want to see what's the computer going to say to that. So the computer comes back at me with, maybe you should go pound sand up my ass yourself. And man, they were this close to teaching that computer how to defend itself. They screwed up just a little bit. Now the computer's the biggest knob in the world, you know? No, you pound sand up my ass. You think twice next time you're gonna mess with me, pal. I was programmed by a genius. I love that insult too. Why don't you go pound sand up your ass? I didn't make that up. Somebody told me to do that once. And I wasn't even offended. I just laughed. I was like, that's great. Oh man. How do I do that? What do I do? What if I wanted to comply with your request? What do you put sand on your fist and then how the hell do you pound it? It's the verb I'm having trouble with. I can get it up there. I just don't know if I can pound it up there. I'm afraid I might need some type of machine for that. Do you, do you have a pounding device that I could use? I don't know. Pick me up. I like when people are a little bit more clever with the language like that, though, because we're pretty lazy with English nowadays. We're pretty base with it. It used to be very beautiful and poetic language, but we don't use it like that anymore, you know? Especially when it comes to, like, arguments and insulting people, right? Here's my impression of a guy from Shakespearean times having an argument with a guy from today, right? Here's the guy from Shakespearean times. Oh, thou art a crusty botch of nature indeed. You have not so much brains as earwax. Oh, I'll waste no more words on thee, except to say this, my good window of lattice. Methinks thou art a general offense, and all men should beat thee. A plague on you and your house. Now, here's the guy from today. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, fancy pants. And your house, how's that? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I got your plague right here, all right? There's your... <laughs> Who won that argument? I don't know, that was good. The first guy had all the fancy talk, but I got your plague right here. That's a closer, baby. <laughs> End of argument. I had an operation on my penis when I was 11. Did you want to know that? Probably not. Sorry, too late. It's too late now, you know. Hey, I had to have it done to me. You just have to hear about it, okay? You got the easy end of the stick. No, seriously, I was 11 years old. I had to have an operation on my penis. It was so traumatic for me. You know, I'm 11, and it was... Just... I should tell you what the problem was. It was uh, too long. No. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm lying. No, it wasn't. Seriously, though, I had a problem. My, uh, my pee hole was too small. I swear to God, my pee hole was too small. It, it hurt when I peed because it was too much pressure, you know? So they had to make my pee hole bigger, you know? It was too much pressure. Mind you, I could cut rock. Holy cow, it was really cool. It was wild. I used to make my mom these little ornaments and stuff, you know, like little, little elephants and giraffes, you know, like really fine detail work. I was so good. 
I had so much talent. But we had to get me fixed because it hurt, you know? It was... But I remember that. I remember I was, I was halfway through this. My mom really liked the elephants, you know? So I was halfway through this collection of elephants for her. And I remember telling her, I remember going up and going, Mom, it, it really hurts. Can we get that operation now? And she was like, just finish the elephants first. <laughs> no, she didn't. She was a good mom. She got me the operation right away. But uh, no, she was a very good mom. And I felt bad for my mom when I was a kid because uh, she was the disciplinarian of the family. You know, she was the one that had to dole out the discipline because my dad wasn't around. But uh, she, and I felt bad for her because like I said, I was so, and I think, I think parents should hit their kids. I think they should not beat them, but I think you need to learn that first <laughs> smacking lesson from a parent, right? Like you need to learn that uh, if you really piss someone off, you might get hit one day. And better to learn that from, you know, the love of a mother's arm <laughs> than the biker in the alley who didn't give birth to your sorry ass and ain't gonna hold nothing back, right? You know I mean? But like I said, I felt bad for my mom because when I was a kid, I was so skinny, there was nowhere where she could hit me where she didn't hit bone and hurt herself worse. I swear to God, my mom actually cracked her wrist one time on my ass. My mom was in a cast for two weeks because she hit me in the ass. And I was such a little prick too, I know. Every time I did something wrong, I would just go. Come and get some, mom. Come on in if you dare. But like I said, I think parents should, you know, discipline their kids and hit them. And that's why I don't feel bad about this and I don't consider it child abuse the few times I was growing up that my mom punched me in the bag. Because, hey, <laughs> she found a spot where it didn't hurt her. And God bless her, I learned some lessons I needed to learn. I can't keep getting away with stuff like that, you know? It was, it was horrible. Well, you guys have been a lovely, lovely crowd. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. We'll see you all again sometime, I hope. Good night. Thank you.